This handheld unit is the B&K Precision DAS or DOS or DAWS 60, which is a data recorder. In this video, we give it an overview, talk about what it can record, and show a few measurements it can do. This unit came from the Element 14 Community's road test program. That's where you receive gear in exchange for a review. Hello and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go overview. The DAW 60 measures approximately 210 by 295 by 105 millimeters, but only weighs about 2.5 kilograms. The front panel is a 10 inch TFT display with touch. It comes with an external AC to DC converter, but it also has a non user replaceable lithium battery that is good for about nine hours. The DAW 60 has six analog input channels, 16 digital channels, and support for two or three wire RTD temperature probes. The logic channels connect to a 25-pin D-sub connector, which also has four pins for alarm or output signals. The DAWs 30 and DAWs 50 have fewer analog channels, and the RTD inputs are optional. All three models have a thermal printer option as well. And in this case, optional means factory option because you need to add them at the time of purchase. Some of the included accessories are this carrying case, test leads, and alligator clips for each channel. At the time of this recording, the DAW 60 costs $6,999 US dollars. In memory mode, the DAW 60 samples at one mega sample per second or every one microsecond. The main visual measurement is function across time. The large touchscreen allows you to turn on all six analog channels, all 16 logic channels, the two temperature sensor inputs, and four of what it calls functions. These all share the same time-based setting, but each can have its own vertical scale. You can also give all of the analog channels and functions their own grid or screen. A numeric mode lets you see all of the measurements at a glance, which is easy to see from a distance. I mentioned the sample rate, but only for a real-time or what they call memory mode. In file mode, the recorder saves the samples to disk, and there the settings get a little confusing. Going into file, it looks like you can set a one microsecond rate, However, the max rate is actually two microseconds, and that is only for one channel. Enabling more channels means a slower sample rate. Fortunately, the UI tells you when this is the case. Internally, the DAW 60 has about 60 gigabytes of storage available, or you can save directly to a USB drive using a slower sample rate. From the Seafram or Sephram website, you can download a viewer software. This Windows only tool imports the recording so you can annotate or make measurements using a PC. It also allows you to export the data to a CSV file for use in other tools. Now, like an oscilloscope, the DAW 60 has triggers, and these allow you to set conditions to start or stop the recorder. In the trigger section, you can select from digital, analog, or a combination of events. We'll come back to the analog triggers in just a minute. The recorder also supports something called functions and math. However, relative to an oscilloscope, these names are backwards. There are five math functions which are actually waveform measurements like peak-to-peak, -peak, frequency, and RMS. They can be applied to the analog channels or a function waveform. Speaking of those, function waveforms look like waveform math on oscilloscopes. One option is to apply an equation based on sample data and constants, or to create a waveform of the signal's RMS, or create a track of its frequency, or apply filter. This example is a 10 hertz sine wave with all of the functions turned on and some uh, math applied to them. Regarding the analog inputs, even though they only measure voltage, you can record other quantities. For example, they can also record frequency or the duty cycle of a pulse width modulated waveform, or they can count based on a threshold voltage. And any of these can create the start or stop trigger conditions I mentioned before when recording data. Also, you can measure current, as in amperes, by measuring the voltage across a shunt resistor. There is also support for external sensors. By the way, that DB25 port also has an unregulated 9 to 15 volt output that provides up to 200 milliamps to power those external sensors. You can also use a current clamp to make measurements, but I don't have one with banana connectors. If I did, then I could have made use of the power analyzer measurement it allows you to measure single or three phase power. You can see data in multiple displays. For example, you can view the harmonics as a graph or make measurements like power factor and crest factor. 
the user interface widgets are all very large, so they're easy to see and touch. The unit has a built-in Ethernet port, and it has two USB host ports. So you can plug in a mouse and keyboard, which is helpful when setting up names of channels or math functions to be more descriptive for a specific measurement. But also, you can attach a USB Wi-Fi dongle. Once connected by Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you can connect to the instrument using real VNC. This connection lets you view the current state of the measurement or operate the user interface remotely. BNK does offer an official dongle for this unit. In my case, I found a generic adapter worked fine, although your experience may vary. Remember, this unit is part of the road test program, so whoever gets this unit next will be posting a much more detailed review than this video. Overall, I think as a multi-purpose data logger, the DAWS 60 has the right set of core features. There are plenty of input options available, even on the two-channel version. Those inputs can represent any practical quantity that is measurable as voltage. There are powerful measurement and waveform math capabilities, even if I think they're named wrong. The combination of built-in battery and remote access via Wi-Fi or Ethernet means you can place the unit anywhere in a facility or on a site and check in to see what is going on. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Element 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.